Jessica Pegg won three national titles. But now there's a changing of the guard in women's basketball. No longer content to play the bridesmaid, coach Colleen Dufresne has brought her team back to the finals. Led by fourth-year point guard T.L. Johannesson, they say that this is their year to claim the CIAU's top prize. But first, they'll have to beat the University of Toronto. The Varsity Blues have an agenda of their own. Led by CIAU Player of the Year, Justine Ellison. Coach Michelle Belanger says her team wanted to beat Manitoba in the final, and now the Blues have their chance. The University of Toronto Varsity Blues and the Manitoba Bison. The women's final is next. Now in our second decade of university sports coverage, TSN proudly presents CIAU Basketball. Today, live on TSN, it's the number one ranked University of Toronto Varsity Blues taking on the number two ranked Manitoba Bison. Welcome to Quebec City, everyone. I'm Teresa Herbert. Today's final is what every CIAU player has worked toward all year. Uh, the top eight teams from across the country met here at the University of Lavelle. By Saturday night, we were down to the final four. Here's a look at how the road to the final came about. Manitoba beat Dalhousie in the quarters, then after a slow start in their semifinal, finally pulled it out to beat the Western Mustangs. The University of Toronto beat Lavelle in the quarters, then after a very tough semi against McGill, finally pulled out the win in the dying seconds of the game. Michelle Belanger was the coach of the last uh, University of Toronto team to win the national title. She says that she's got her gold medal in her briefcase and is not afraid to pull it out today if she feels that her team needs a little bit of motivation. Manitoba, on the other hand, says they don't need any motivation at all because they are here to avenge last year's loss to their cross-town rivals, the Winnipeg Westmen. So to call today's action, here is Gord Miller and color commentator Kathy Shields. Thanks very much, Teresa. Delighted to welcome the coach of the University of Victoria and the former coach of our national women's team, Kathy Shields. Kathy, the first thing I noticed is that neither of these teams is on an eight zillion game winning streak like Calgary and the University of Winnipeg went on earlier in this decade. But what we have here are the number one and number two ranked teams in the nation. First of all, the number one ranked University of Toronto Varsity Blues, led by the CIAU's Player of the Year. Well, Justine Ellison is just a great player. Nankoff Award winner. Uh, which is given to the Outstanding Player of the Year. She can score inside, she can take it outside and score, she can take it to the hoop. It's very difficult to contain. Now, the University of Manitoba has an All-Canadian of its own, T.L. Johannesson, a different kind of player, though. Very much so. T.L. is a, a guard, um, very quick, very um, great ability to penetrate, can pull up for the jump shot, will be a, a great challenge for uh, Toronto. So when you got the number one and number two teams in the nation, you're obviously talking about teams that know how to win. Both these teams have been beaten in the last couple of years in the national women's title game. What do you expect today? Well, I think both teams are going to be um, trying to play their style of game, which are very different. Manitoba wants a pressing, running game. U of T wants to slow it down and pound it inside to their outstanding player, Tina. And we can't wait to see it. March, the month of champions continues on TSN. When we come back, we'll set the starting lineups for you and have the opening tip from the University of Laval. Basketball National Final, brought to you by Chevrolet. Tried, tested, and true. Welcome back to the University of Laval, getting set for the CIAU Women's Basketball Championship game for 1996, and getting set for the introductions now of the starting lineup. First of all, for the University of Toronto Varsity Blues in her fifth year out of Dundas, Ontario, the CIAU's Player of the Year, Justine Ellison. 
Her opposite number for the University of Manitoba is 22-year-old Stacey Ewell. She is also the only senior on her team. Number 10, 21-year-old Elizabeth Hart from Brantford, Ontario, led her team with 22 points over McGill in the semifinal win yesterday. An all-tournament player here last year, Vicki Newfeld, is a fourth-year player from Winkler, Manitoba. Kate Brancourt is a fourth-year art student out of Etobicoke, Ontario, 22 years old, a forward. 19-year-old Marjorie Kelly is a second-year art student from Winnipeg. A fourth-year art student from Owen Sound, Ontario, 22-year-old Laurel Johnson, who is also a member of Canada's National Junior Program. The CIAU's all-rookie player from GPAC, 19-year-old Ann Smith is a native of Laval, Quebec, and playing basically in her own backyard. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Toronto Varsity Blues, number 15, Yvonne Sapinski, 23 years old, a fourth-year science major out of the University of Toronto. For Manitoba, is T.L. Johannesson, 23 years old, a fourth-year art student, an all-Canadian who was all-tournament here one year ago. The coach of the Varsity Blues in her 17th year is Michelle Boulanger. She won the CIAU's national championship with Toronto back in 1986. The coach of the Manitoba Bisons, Colleen Dufresne, won the CIAU championship back in 1988 and played for Canada in the 1976 Olympics in Montreal. She is a native of that city. So once again, to set the lineups for you, Ellison, Brancart, and Johnson in the front court for the Toronto Varsity Blues. In the back court, Hart and Spachinski. For the Manitoba Bisons, Kelly, Newfeld, and Smith. Then look out in the backcourt for the player that Kathy Shields talked about, T.L. Johannesson, the All-Canadian, who was the Great Plains Athletic Conference MVP this year. Reg Caulfield of Halifax is one of our officials. Janice Deacon of Kingston, Ontario is the other. And we're set now for the final game of the 1996 <laughs> CIAU women's season. Kathy? Well, I think it's going to be an outstanding game. Um, both teams will probably be a little bit nervous at the start, but they'll settle down quickly. Yeah, exactly. We'll watch for early nerves from both sides. Pachinski now with it, number 15 for Ellison. Justine Ellison, number 9, is the player to watch for Toronto. She sets the screen inside. Pachinski with the open shot, makes the first. And Toronto with the early lead, always nice to make the first. Wow, one. That, that really helps settle some nerves down when you hit those early shots. First trip now for the Manitoba Bisons wearing their home white uniforms. This is Ann Smith, number 11, in the corner to Marjorie Kelly. No good, the rebound to Kate Brancart. And now Toronto with a chance to add to the lead. Here's Ellison, double teamed, lost the ball for a moment. We've got a foul called now. And I believe it will be on Marjorie Kelly, number 10. Well, Toronto started out in a 2-3 zone and um, were able to stop Manitoba early there, but... Um, now we've got Tina on the line, so that's a good way to start for Toronto. Liz Hart, number 10 with it, trying to work the give and go. Now they kick it back to Laurel Johnson, inside once again for Justine Ellison off the glass, and good. And right away we see the effect that Justine Ellison can have. She draws the double team on the foul, and then makes the ensuing basket. Well, Toronto uh, is in their high post offense, and it's designed to get the ball inside to Tina, and they were effective that time down. Now the steal, here's Liz Hart underneath for Ellison again. She has a quick four, and Toronto has a 6-0 lead. We talked about nerves being a factor. How soon do you think Colleen Dufresne might look to a timeout here to try to settle her team down a bit? Well, she's gonna, she, she hopes that the team can settle down on their own. They have a limited number of timeouts, and uh, I think they just got to relax a little bit and hopefully uh, you know, get into the game. Early six-point lead for Toronto. T.L. Johannesson's first drive to the basket is no good, and back comes Toronto. With a chance to add to the lead. Here again is Ellison from outside and good. Well, uh, Manitoba's picked up Toronto man-to-man, -man, which is a bit of a surprise. A lot of people thought they'd start in a zone. Justine Ellison with another two. She scored the last six, and it's 8 nothing Varsity Blues. Here's Johannesson. 38 points the last two games for the Manitoba point guard. She's been a big part of two easy wins relatively for Manitoba in the tournament. Well, uh, they've got to find a way to penetrate that zone. Uh, Stacey Ewell with the miss there. Now Kate Branchart again with the rebound. And Toronto with a chance to go to double digits here. They put it up quickly. No good. As Laurel Johnson misses. But now on the follow. And it's Toronto with a 10 to nothing lead. 
Wow, they got to stop the bleeding soon, uh, Manitoba. They don't want to let Toronto get too far ahead here. Elizabeth Hart with that last rebound in the basket for Toronto. And a nightmare start here for Manitoba. But now Yvonne Sikinski hits. That's right. And finally, the Bisons are on the board, trailing 10-2. Check that was Johannesson hitting for Manitoba. T.L. Johannesson, the All-Canadian. Well, Manitoba's answered back with some pressure of their own. They had to score to be able to put the press on, and that was the problem at the start. Now we'll see if they can control Ellison, who's working underneath. She sets the screen. Laurel Johnson loses it. And back comes Johannesson for Manitoba. Johannesson underneath off the glass and good. So the two All-Canadians are dominating here in the early going. Well, that's the way you like to see it in a big game. You, you want your top players coming to play and, and uh, making sure that they uh, play up to their normal standards. Full court pressure there by Manitoba now, trying to force another turnover from Toronto. Laurel Johnson back outside to Spachinski with the first basket of the game. There have been quite a few since. Ellison blocked inside by Vicky Newfeld. And Toronto gets it back. That's going to be a key matchup. Newfeld is a very athletic player. And she can, she can uh, give uh, Tina some problems today. Laurel Johnson with the drive underneath, but the foul is called, and it is the second team foul to Manitoba. We've got Laurel on the line. She's a pretty good foul shooter. Um, it was a big key for Toronto last night down the stretch in their semifinal game with Sydney foul shot. The freshman Ann Smith with a foul. She checks out of the basketball game now, and coming in is number nine, Kyla Koski from Manitoba. Laurel Johnson at the line, fouled in the act of shooting. Toronto's been able to go inside early, and uh, that's something that Manitoba's got to try and uh, shut down. Laurel Johnson makes them both, and uh, she knows a thing or two about playing for the Varsity Blues. Her sister Kim played five years for the Blues and graduated last season. That's right, she was an outstanding uh, guard. Now from the corner, Marjorie Kelly with the miss, and once again a big rebound inside by Laurel Johnson. That's one area Toronto expected to have an advantage, enjoying a height differential over Manitoba. That's right, they have to control the board. That's very important. Liz Hart, now the band bounce pass underneath, and Justine Ellison virtually unchallenged. Strikes once again, she now has eight. U of T is able to go inside with their high post offense very well. Manitoba's really got to find an answer for that before it gets out of hand. Now Marjorie Kelly, back goes up to Stacey Yule. Johannesson from the corner, off the iron and no good, but the rebound goes back to Stacey Yule. Johannesson now. Here's Kelly. Trying to find a way to attack that zone. Got it to TL, that's a good way. Johannesson, but that shot is short, and another rebound there to Kate Brancart. And back up the Varsity Blues. Here is Justine Ellison. Ellison triple team that time. Tried to make the pass, but it's knocked away. Kelly now for Yule. Bounce pass to Johannesson. Off the glass. Wow. And good. Well, yeah. Manitoba clawing back, Kathy. They are. And, you know, a big part of their game is creating turnovers. And uh, that gets the running game going. Justine Ellison with the miss. And look at him go right back up the floor to Marjorie Kelly, who kicks it outside for Johannesson. And she's got the easy one off the glass. And now a lead that was 10-0 is cut to 14-8. Well, both Manitoba's been able to get their pressure going. And, um, oh, another turnover. Yeah, the full court pressure there forces another Toronto turnover. Timeout on the floor. An early start and a quick start to this game. 14-8. Toronto lead. All right, Teresa, we'll get back to you in a moment. Uh, we're having uh, microphone difficulties down in the corner, and so we get tired that it's 14-8 in favor of the Toronto Varsity Blues with a timeout. Kathy, I'm intrigued what you'd tell your team if you were the University of Manitoba right now. You got off to a, a, start, a nightmare start. You're down 10-0 early. Right. Well, I mean, what they've got to do is, is just relax a little bit. They've got to keep playing uh, the pressure defense that they've, that's gotten them back into the game, creating the turnovers at the uh, Toronto end, and that's allowed them to come down and get some easy scores. How much of a factor is being on national television? Well, it's, um, it is a factor. I mean, it's, it's nerve-wracking a little bit. But, you know, in about another couple minutes, they'll forget all about it. Good play. Manitoba down by six in the first half of this game. This is Marjorie Kelly, number 10. Oh. T.L. Johannesson. 
Tries to kick it back out for Stacy Ewell, and Ewell decides she'll reset the offense. A bounce pass for Vicki Newfeld. Vicki Newfeld with the move, but one extra step traveling. They're, they're struggling against uh, Toronto's zone. Uh, Toronto's got a big zone, and uh, Manitoba, uh, very athletic, needs to penetrate to uh, create scores, and they're having problems that way. They have and, to get the ball inside. And patience, Kathy, may be trouble for a running team that tends to like to run and gun. And they're from the corner. Laurel Johnson hits again, and the Toronto lead is back to eight. Laurel's really stepped up her game today, and that's going to be very important for, for the Toronto Blues. Freshman Ann Smith, number 11, back into the game for Manitoba, the only freshman in the starting lineup for either team. Well, she's, a, she's a great young player. Uh, she's had some experience in and siege up, and she's really been a key player for them this year. Second traveling call that goes against Manitoba early in this first half. And they're back in their high post set. Almost yeah. another turnover. And Smith with the touch. Referee Reg Caulfield says it was touched on the way out. Manitoba ball. And Michelle Belanger didn't like that call one bit. Now Vicki Newfield underneath. And Newfield is fouled as she shoots. And Manitoba will go to the line. What a great athlete Vicki Newfield is. Uh, that was a very difficult catch. She went way up on that one. And the foul is on Justine Ellison, her first, and the team's first as well. One of, one of the players that hasn't gotten unleashed for the University of Manitoba as yet is Marjorie Kelly. And everybody expected uh, that Marjorie would play a big factor in this game. So we we'll wait and see if we can Manitoba gets uh, Marjorie. Vicki Newfeld, a 68% free throw, show, free throw shooter, pardon me, through the regular season. This is both of those, and the lead remains eight. And underneath, Liz Hart loses control of the ball for a moment. But the Varsity Blues will get it back. And we've got our first substitution for Toronto coming into the game is number eight, Rachel Deamois. And checking out of the game is Kate Brancourt. Uh, Rachel did a ter tremendous job last night in the semis down the stretch. She was the, she was the difference. She hit a couple of key hoops and got some great baskets. Got a stretch for the... She had 10 points down the stretch, but that time she walked. And it's Manitoba ball. Now the game kind of settles into the back and forth we expected. They got the early nerves out of the way, and they got the early run and gun out of the way. <laughs> now they'll play basketball. Johannesson controlling the offense. This is Newfeld from the corner, and good. Newfeld is a very versatile athlete. She can, uh, she's got a great vertical leap, but she can also hit the outside shot. And she, too, was all tournament at the CIU Women's Championship last year. Great save there by Liz Hart for Toronto. This is Deamwa, number eight, working it down in the corner. Pachinski now for Liz Hart. And Hart spots a cutting Justine Ellison underneath, and Ellison has all day to make that shot, which she does easily. She does. And, uh, you know, Manitoba's still in man-to-man, -man, and um, they have to just do a little bit better job. They've got a backdoor move there for uh, Tina, and that's an easy shot for Tina to make. And that time, bringing it right back up the floor was T.L. Johannesson, but... She lost control of it. Manitoba's in a man-to-man -man full court press now. Allison with the bounce pass underneath. It gets away from Laurel Johnson. Back comes Manitoba. Two on two. This is Johannesson with a great move in the air. And she's fouled as she goes up. Well, it's, it's difficult. When T.L. wants to go to the basket, it's very difficult to stop her. Liz Hart with the foul, her first, and the team second. And T.L. Johannesson goes to the line for the Manitoba Bison. And makes the first. Now, T.L. played on our student national team last summer. Outstanding young guard. Great future, I think, in the national team program. And was a member of Canada's world student team, as you mentioned. He led a team that shot 82% from the line in conference play. Manitoba howling for a walk there as it looked like Yvonne Spachinski took an extra step. Now Spachinski gets it back to an open Laurel Johnson. The shot no good. Liz Hart battles for the rebound and comes away with it. She almost had to battle her coach Michelle Belanger for it. And Laurel Johnson with the miss. Long lead pass from Marjorie Kelly. She goes in and Kelly misses the layup. Oh. 
That's unusual. Marjorie's usually a sure thing on uh, close-in shots, especially layups. Laurel Johnson pulls up, now thinks better of shooting. And one of the things Manitoba has to try to do if they stay man-to-man -man is really deny the ball into the high post. Tina's in the high post right now, and it's just coming in way too easily. And a loose ball on the floor, a timeout as well. 11.21 to play in the first half. Toronto leads by seven. Hey! John, you said that Justine picked up her first basketball when she's five. What a career she's had. Well, she's had a great career, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, as a father, it's the uh, most rewarding uh, gift that a, a daughter or a son can give a, a parent to uh, have accomplished what she's accomplished. Well, I'll tell you, success sure runs in this family. John Ellison's a successful uh, song and songwriter and a singer. Uh, he wrote a song back in the 70s that was popularized by the Grand Trunk Railroad. I bet you you'll know it. And it truly says everything what Justine Ellison is all about. Okay, Dad, hit it. Yeah, well, this is it's for Justine Ellison. She's some kind of wonderful, yes, she is. And the team, some kind of wonderful. Talking about the varsity blues, but some kind of wonderful. Thank you so much, John. Hey, I'm beat. I, I, I can't top that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Justine Ellison there with the save, just as Dad finished singing. Pretty talented family. Here's Paczynski now, back into the corner to Liz Hart, working one-on-one -on -one and makes the three. The first three-point basket made in the basketball game. 21-11 now. The Toronto lead is once again 10, equaling the largest lead the Varsity Blues have enjoyed. Yeah, and that allows Toronto to again pick up in a 2-1 containing press. And they really want to try and slow the game down and, and slow the TL down. First shot tried there by Ann Smith, and the freshman has ice water in her veins. And she makes her first try. Well, she made our old rookie team. She's just a great one. Sam Juan now kicks it back over. And this is Liz Hart, number 10. And the shot won't go for Kate Brancard. But the rebound underneath picked up by Spachinski. Now from the corner, Liz Hart again and in and out. But again, the rebound goes to Toronto. Sam Juan with it. Ellison trying to work underneath, and Smith reached in, and maybe that's the one way to stop her, is to just tackle her like a football player, which is what Ann Smith tried there. Well, Man Manitoba's uh, trying very hard not to allow this penetration. You see Tina's able to get, get through the uh, zone, and uh, they're forced to foul. Ann Smith picked up her second foul of the game. Again from the corner, Hart lets it fly, and that time off the top of the glass and no good. Yeah, I think we've seen the two teams come out much like we thought they would. Toronto's been able to go inside. Uh, Manitoba's been able to get their running game going. Here's and Smith again, open and good. 19-year-old Ann Smith playing in her hometown of Laval, Quebec, but playing for the University of Manitoba. She has four. Okay, Manitoba's in a 1-2, 1-1 one, one, one full-court press right now. That looked like a three-on-one full-court press, <laughs> what that looks like. Yeah, they're getting good pressure on the ball, and that's going to give Toronto some problems if they can't solve it. Laurel Johnson checks back into the game for Toronto, and Rachel Damois checks out. How long can you play this kind of pressure, though? It's pretty tough on a basketball team to play full-court pressure like that. Well, Manitoba's used to it, and um, they've played this way all year. They've played this way for, an, for a couple of years, and they've got the talent, and they've got the athletes. Wide open in the corner is Laurel Johnson, who puts it up, and good. Laurel's having an outstanding half. She's uh, shooting the ball outside, and she's getting the ball inside to Tina. Laurel Johnson now with six. Underneath, Marjorie Kelly is rejected, and as Yvonne Spachinski tried to break away with it, she is fouled. Stacy Ewell on the block. That is team foul number four on the Manitoba Bison. And you shoot on the eight. Yeah, they're in, they're in good shape. Um, if they can stay out of bonus, they'll be fine. Ellison, and if they can find a way to stop Justine Ellison. Ellison now with 12, and Toronto with a 10-point lead for the third time in this first half. 
Yeah, they really have to find a solution to that. They're letting letting uh, Tina get the ball inside way too easily. Stacy Yule now setting it up way at the top of the arc. Throw in back the, in in the two three zone. And Kelly can't find the range early on, and right away the rebound goes back to Toronto's Yvonne Pachinski. And Pachinski with a long lead pass for Ellison, but she was double covered. And back comes Manitoba. Here's Stacy Yule, number four. Double team in the corner. She goes underneath for Newfeld, and the shot is good, and the foul as well. Well, Vicky, like I said before, Vicky's got a great vertical leap, and she just muscled that up. Here we see Vicky Newfeld getting the ball inside. She goes straight up and finds a way to get the ball in the basket. Newfeld yeah. misses the chance to make the three-point play. Manitoba able to rebound. Great rebound. Offensive rebounds often are the difference. The team that can get the offensive board has a great advantage. Here's Smith open again. The high arcing shot falls short. Smith gets her own rebound underneath and is blocked by Laurel Johnson. But once again, Manitoba gets it back. Yeah, a little bit of a questionable shot to take, but at least Ann went after it hard and got her own rebound. Vicki Newfeld. Out of the corner, and open is Johannesson, the high arcing shot, and that is good. Two for Manitoba, and the Bison cut the lead to six. And now again, we see that full court trap almost that Manitoba is employing. That's right, and uh, Toronto is able to get the ball long, but sometimes um, you end up taking a quick shot like Toronto did. Laurel Johnson with the miss. This is T.L. Johannesson working on two. She kicks it out for Kelly. Marjorie Kelly goes down. The shot won't go, and Smith can't get the rebound to fall. But Manitoba finally getting some rebounds now. Seven minutes to play in the first half, and Smith long. And now Toronto comes away with this rebound. Frenetic end-to-end -end action here, and Toronto with a six-point lead. Well, in that, that instance, uh, Manitoba was able to get them into a full-court game, and uh, Toronto's got to get it settled down a little bit. Here's Ellison, Justine Ellison being very closely watched. Liz Hart on the drive, but she travels. 6.36 to play in the first half. The Varsity Blues with a six-point lead. The ball final, and so is CIU President Liz Hoffman. Liz, you said a Thursday night's award banquet. You've got big plans for women's basketball. What are they? Well, we're really looking to bring this fabulous sport to a new level. We're developing new partnerships with our sponsors, with our sports governing bodies, and also with the NBA. So we're really looking ahead for these exciting athletes. Well, I also understand that you're moving the finals into semi-permanent sites. For example, the women's basketball final will be played for the next three years in Thunder Bay at Lakehead University. What will that do? Well, that's really going to allow us to, get, to move this sport to the next level. As I said, we're going to have the community, the sponsors, and all of the universities behind us. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's a great product. Thank you so much, Liz. Let's take you back to first, bat, first half action. Here's Ford Miller. Thanks very much, Teresa. That's what it's all about. The bronze baby that is awarded every year to the CIAU women's basketball champion. For the last three years, it's gone to the University of Winnipeg. And before that, Kathy Shields, Victoria Bikes won. <laughs> this year, it's either the Manitoba Bisons or the Toronto Varsity Blues. And it's been mostly Toronto so far. Manitoba, you'd have to say fortunate to only be down six. Now a loose ball. And Manitoba with the last touch. Toronto to inbound. Well, when you look at the two teams' shooting percentages, it, it really uh, is an indicator of why the score is the way it is. Toronto's been able to shoot 59% already, and Manitoba's been held at uh, 38%. Toronto shooting 10 points above its season average, Manitoba 10 points below, and there once again is Justine Ellison who makes, and the fifth-year senior is on a major roll now. She's got 14. Manitoba's got to find a way to, to uh, stop Tina from getting those easy high percentage shots inside. Ivan Spachinski with the foul there and going to the line for Manitoba is Marjorie Kelly, number 10. The CIAU's Rookie of the Year last year. Well, Marjorie Kelly's had two outstanding seasons and uh, she's having a bit of a problem getting on track today. Once again, coming into the game for Toronto is Rachel Deamois as Liz Hart, number 10, will take a seat. And actually, T.L. Johannesson will shoot 
for Manitoba. And Johannesson with the miss. As a team, the Bison shot 71% from the free throw line. That's, that's about average. Good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I mean, that's, that, in, in a national championship, any big game, whichever team shoots well from the line, uh, it's going to be successful. Manitoba shot 82% to the line in the semifinal win yesterday. Liz Hart spins, and the shot won't go for the rebound to Vicki Neufeld. Manitoba down by eight. Five and a half minutes to play in the first half. Here's Neufeld underneath, and she gets the shot to go, even though she was well guarded by Stephanie Splitter, the first-year player who has just checked into the game for the Varsity Blues. Toronto's still in their zone, um, and last, that time Vicky was able to get the ball inside. Allison has the pass knocked away for a moment, but Liz Hart was able to come up with it for Toronto. Hart being very closely watched. This is Damois, and she makes it. Rachel Damois, who had 10 points in the semifinal win coming off the bench yesterday. Now coming the other way, Marjorie Kelly. She has fouled, count the basket. And a chance now for Manitoba to climb within five. There you see the great athletic ability of Marjorie Kelly taking the ball to the basket. See Marjorie taking it against the defense right there, going up top, great vertical leap, able to finish the, the shot. Stephanie Splitter with the foul, her first, and Marjorie Kelly with a chance to complete the three-point play. That last time down, we saw Manitoba go into his own defense, and I think that is, is the way that they're going to try and contain Toronto's inside game. And Marjorie Kelly unable to convert on the three-point play. Toronto lead is six, and once again, Justine Ellison, when required, gets the key points for Toronto. They're back in man-to-man -man that time, and again, they were able to get the ball in the post. Marjorie Kelly tries the shot, but she is fouled. Justine Ellison, that is her second. Okay, here's Marjorie taking the ball to the basket, tough again, and uh, she's very quick, very athletic. And once again, the miss, but that time Ann Smith reaching underneath for the rebound, and she draws another Toronto foul. Well, Ann just kind of snuck in there on that end out of bounds, and uh, Toronto, I think they fell asleep on that. Rachel Damois with the foul, and this is one problem area for Manitoba. The Bisons are one for seven from the free throw line thus far in the game. Well, yeah, I mean, there's another example. They have to hit their foul shots. Uh, not only to climb back into the game, but to, to win the game. One for eight now after Smith misses the front end. It's gotta be nerve. One for nine, and that's the lead. It's an eight point Toronto advantage. Amazing. Liz Hart down into the corner to Kate Brancart. Here's Laurel Johnson back into the game, number 14, off the dribble. And she loses it, trying to get it down to the corner to Hart. Johannesson over the defender, goes off the rim, and then decides to go back in. What a great pull-up shot. Manitoba hanging in there, and now with 4.06 to play in the first half, Toronto coach, let's go down to the Manitoba huddle and see what Colleen Dufresne has to say to her troops. and just calm down so obviously the, the up-tempo attack will stay for Manitoba. Definitely. Uh, the problem being uh, though that they have to score to get into their press and they have to find a way to, to uh, get inside the Toronto zone to be able to put their press on. Interesting the similarities between the two head coaches Colleen Dufresne and Michelle Boulanger both were outstanding players. In fact uh, Michelle Boulanger won four national championships with Laurentian. Yes, both both outstanding players, both played for Canada back in the 70s and are now 
two of our finest coaches in Canada. One of the numbers that you take a look at from pressure is turnovers. Teams that like to apply pressure want to force a lot of turnovers, and thus far, Manitoba has been able to do some of that. Toronto has turned the ball over 11 times so far, and there's another, make it 12. And pressure takes its toll over the course of the game. You may not get instant rewards, but over the course of the game, it's going to wear Toronto down if, if they can't learn how to uh, stop turning the ball over and start taking care of the ball. Marjorie Kelly for Stacey Ewell, and Ewell with the try underneath. That's tipped on the way out and out of bounds. Underneath, and look out. Laurel Johnson goes for a tough tumble underneath, and she is fouled. And Toronto with a six-point lead and 3.40 to play. We'll go back to the line. Yeah, Toronto again, um, they're, they're, they're creating foul problems for Manitoba because uh, they're getting the ball inside, and um, that, that's going to create some problems as the game goes on for Manitoba. Toronto leads it 31-25. And with 3.40 to play in the opening half, we'll take a break and return to Laval in a moment. Welcome back to the University of Laval in Quebec City. The Toronto Varsity Blues in their light blue uniforms taking on the Manitoba Bisons for the CIAU Women's Basketball Championship. Another turnover by the Toronto Varsity Blues and it is Toronto ball, although Stacey Ewell disputes the call. Manitoba picked up the man-to-man -man a little bit more and uh, did a good job that time. Ball went inside and they were able to double-team it. Justine Ellison, the player of the year in the CIU, gets a break now on the Toronto bench. Kate Brancard with the long-running jumper able to make that. Well, Brancard um, could be the difference here. They played earlier in the year without Brancard and lost to Manitoba. Vicki Newfeld makes it back for Manitoba. The Bisons beat Toronto twice in December. But as you mentioned, in both those games, Toronto was without Kate Brancard. Brancard's a great shooter. And uh, that time she took it to the hoop, but she also uh, has a great outside shot, three-point shooter. Liz Johannesson was the, or T.L. Johannesson, sorry, fouled on the play, and uh, that's her first foul of the basketball game. 33-27 is the score in favor of Toronto. The Varsity Blues got up to a 10-0 lead in the game. Manitoba still in man-to-man. -man. A little bit more pressure. Open is Brancard, but she misses that time, and the rebound goes to T.L. Johannesson. And the long football-type pass, and that is intercepted and brought back the other way by Spachinski. Yvonne Spachinski with the bounce pass, but that's picked up by Stacey Ewell. Ewell underneath for a wide open Vicky Newfeld, and Newfeld makes for the Bison. Now down by four, they're as close as they've been since the opening moments of the game. Well, you see Manitoba being able to apply their pressure a little bit more. Toronto still having trouble with turnovers. And that time, Liz Hart on the drive. But Hart is fouled. And we've got a timeout call by the Toronto Varsity Blues. 2.23 to play. In the first half, and Coach Michelle Belanger has an angry word for the officials on the way by. So I think that was a good timeout. Uh, Toronto's got to settle down. And they have to try and uh, find a way to uh, handle Manitoba's pressure. So Michelle Belanger calls her troops in. And let's see if she, she can listen to what she has to say. I'm not a very good lip reader, but you can tell Michelle's pretty animated. <laughs> well, I, I would I would guess that uh, Michelle is, is, you know, there's been a momentum swing, and Michelle's uh, trying to settle them down, uh, trying to get them organized. Belanger led the Toronto Varsity Blues to the CIAU title back in 1986. Colleen Dufresne won it in 1988 in Manitoba. But since then, women's basketball has really been dominated by a few schools. Laurentian for a couple of years. Calgary went on the long winning streak and of course the last three titles won by the Winnipeg Western. But you were saying that you really feel that things may be as wide open now as they've been in years. Well, I think this tournament, um, you know, we've got the number one and number two teams in the final, which is great. But I think um, we've seen a lot of parity. 
Great pass for T.L. Johannesson, and Terry Lynn Johannesson gets her team within two, not since the first 30 seconds of the game has Manitoba been this close. Here comes the pressure again. Justine Ellison is still on the bench. And the shot won't go for Branchart. So Ellison remains on the bench for Toronto, and Manitoba closes to two. And now Marjorie Kelly finds the range, and the game is tied at 33. Spachinski in the corner for Laurel Johnson. Johnson with a strong move inside, and Toronto is back in front. Now Laurel's just holding holding Toronto in there while, while Tina's on the bench. She, she's really stepped up her game. So Justine Edelson on the bench with three fouls for Toronto. And that's a big problem for Toronto. Um, some serious foul trouble for, for Justine. Uh, Toronto's got um, a couple of players uh, off the bench that, that certainly can help, but um, you know they need Tina Plant. Take the player of the year out of anyone's lineup, but I think you'll find that they won't be nearly as effective. And they're going to try and survive until the half and uh, protect Tina and get her back in the second half. Liz Hart off the window, gets her own rebound and gets hacked underneath. No, she does not. They call the charge on Liz Hart and Michelle Belanger can't believe it. Colleen Dufresne now calls timeout. Well, there she goes up. Uh, Looks like uh, she got a little bit of hack on the arm by um, one of the Bison players. Well, she was fighting under there with Kyla Koski. And the foul goes against Hart. So here's the situation for Toronto. Justine Ellison has 16 points, but three fouls. The team led by 10 points three times, but Manitoba has gamely battled back. T.L. Johannesson has 13 points to lead the Bison thus far. Well, it's really important that Toronto just try and stay organized and, and get into halftime where they can regroup and uh, you know, kind of put down this momentum swing and come out strong in the second half. Manitoba's done a super job coming back. Well, you talked about two veteran coaches here, and certainly that's a factor, but we also talked in the opening about the fact that both these teams have been to the national final in the last two years. Manitoba lost last year. Toronto lost two years ago. Yes, and, and not only experienced teams, experienced coaches. Uh, they've been here before. They know um, how to handle situations like this. Great leadership, and uh, both with experienced teams. There's a couple of guy who, guys who might have experienced the great outdoors here in Quebec, but uh, I don't think it's that cold outside. <laughs> Toronto leads by two, under a minute to play in the opening half. Toronto's in a 1-2-2, three-quarter court press. So Hannison goes up, it won't go. And she was hit on the way up, looked like Yvonne Spachinski got her. And that is Spachinski's second. Seals just such a great player at penetrating. She's got a little shoulder down, was able to go by and draw the foul. And Johannesson with the miss. She was 77% over the course of the season. She has got to hit her foul shot. Well, she makes that one. Manitoba just two for 12 from the line thus far in the game. You know, it's, it's amazing. Whoa, what a big cool. steal by Stacey Yule. Bounce pass for Marjorie Kelly. She gets whacked from behind, but she still makes it. Manitoba leads 36 35, first Bison lead of the game. Well, if Manitoba is not hitting their foul shots and have the lead, that's it unbelievable. Goes well. Yeah, it goes well for them in the second half. Now breaking away is T.L. Johannesson for Marjorie Kelly. Kelly being watched by Laurel Johnson. She has to kick it outside. Ten seconds now. They've gone into a man to man now. Vicky Newfeld, Kelly's open. Kelly puts the shot up and short. Laurel Johnson tries for the rebound. Manitoba will now have three seconds to see what it can do. And Colleen Dufresne will call timeout to see what exactly can be done in that space of time. That's a good call by Michelle. She's got a chance for a last, uh, last second shot, set up a situation here, and hopefully uh, for them go into the locker room ahead. 
three tenths of a second remaining. So what can you do with three tenths? Well, basically all you can do in that time is try and lob, lob the ball and get in the air and try and tip it in. Well, let's see what you can do here. Okay. Okay, Michelle's setting up um, a double screen. And they're going to try and run a player, off, a shooter off uh, the double screen. I'm sorry, Colleen. Colleen is going to run a shooter off the double screen. Probably either Marjorie or TL. Three tenths of a second remaining. The Manitoba Bisons have trailed for most of the first half. In fact, for the first five minutes, it looked like they might get buried in this game, but they battled back despite poor foul shooting. And now with three tenths of a second remaining, they'll see if they can set that double screen. There it is. You see number seven and number nine setting it. They try it underneath. Oh. Nuka puts it up. No good. And time That's expires great. in the opening half. Well, they ran it just like they drew it. They just couldn't quite execute it. But the Manitoba Bison have to be delighted with the opening half, which sees them leading by one point after an opening 20 minutes where they were in danger of really getting buried by the Toronto Varsity Blues. So Justine Ellison, the CIAU Player of the Year, had to sit on the bench with foul problems, and as she did, Manitoba was able to claw back into the basketball game. The score at the half is 36-35, Manitoba leading, and Bison's coach Colleen Dufresne is standing by with our Teresa Herkin. Teresa? Thanks so much, Gord. Well, this women's final has certainly lived up to its billing. Colleen, you must be very pleased with how your Bison's team has battled back. Is this Bison's basketball that you were talking about? Not quite. Okay. We're working on it. Not <laughs> quite. Um, we've shot so poorly from the line, you know, otherwise uh, it wouldn't be the score it is. I think defensively we're doing the things that we want to do, and uh, particularly in the pressure in the last 10 minutes, so that's good for us. Uh, but uh, we've, got, we've got to make the shots from the foul line. We've got to continue to be aggressive and attack the hole. Well, is that going to be your message as you head into this dressing room here in the halftime? No, I don't, I don't want to dwell on, dwell on foul shots. They'll take care of themselves. The kids will make those. But we want to talk about how we want to continue being aggressive and attacking on offense and on defense. Colleen Dufresne, thank you very much for joining us. We'll let you get in to be with your team. My pleasure. Thanks. Can I just say hi to some people? Hi to my husband, Kim, and to Leanne, Trish, and Travis, my brother, Stephen, Carol, and the kids, Melanie and Philip, and to everyone in the AUAA, my maritime road. Well, everyone's rooting for you, Colleen. Thanks. Bell University, welcome back everyone. We're watching the HNCS Montcalm Band as they're entertaining is here. You know, this has truly been a great women's basketball final, but there are so many other great players right across the country. Thursday night, the CIA, CIAU honors them. The beautiful Chateau Frontenac in the heart of Old Quebec City was the site of the women's CIAU basketball awards. The first team all Canadians were honored. They are Terry Lee Johansson, a fourth-year point guard from the University of Manitoba, Justine Ellison of Toronto, Michelle Vespini of the Mustangs, Victoria's Lisa Coop, and Vicky Tessier from McGill. The second team all Canadians are Megan Kosh of the Calgary Dinosaurs, Regina's Trina Mott, the Capers Janice Moisechuk, the Ottawa Gigi Stella Iharwa, and Michelle Healy of the Memorial Seahawks. Andrea Gauthier, a guard and forward for the Regina Cougars, was named the Saxon Rookie of the Year. She led the all-rookie team that included the Bisons, Ann Smith, Lakehead's Alicia Gunn, Karen Voss from Laurentian, and Jackie Simon of the University of Alberta. Justine Ellison, a fifth-year forward from the Varsity Blues, was named the Player of the Year. Ellison led her conference in overall scoring and field goal accuracy this season. And Ron Carew from the University College of Cape Breton was named the CIAU Women's Basketball Coach of the Year. Rosemary Whitfield, Public Relations Officer for the Sports Network, presented the TSN Sylvia Sweeney Award to Jaylene Morrison of the Golden Gales. It's given to the player who best combines athletics with academics and community involvement. These qualities translate into everyday life, and I believe this will help us move on and contribute in a variety of ways to our own communities. Once again, thank you, TSN, and I wish all the players and coaches good luck, play hard, and enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Jaylene Morrison, truly an outstanding winner of the TSN Sylvia Sweeney Award. There's still one more award left to be given out. Today's MVP to the a, a player that best uh, signifies the MVP award as well as the bronze baby, baby will be given to the national champion. Also coming up in this halftime, we have got an update from our TSN Control Center. 
and we'll be sending you there when our live coverage continues here on CSN. Welcome back to CSN's live coverage of the women's basketball final as Manitoba has a one-point lead over the University of Toronto. The score right now is a half, 36 to 35, and the Toronto Blue Boys are out here trying to cheer their team on as the Blues try to go for a national championship. Well, all of the players are, try, are striving toward be a, perhaps being a member of the national team, and this is the coach, Peter Ennis, of the national team. Many fine CIAU players have come aboard to grace the team over the years. How are they looking as they head into the Olympics? Looking good. We've got uh, eight of our 12 last year that qualified for the Olympics in Hamilton, our CIU players. And out of the 16 we kept all summer, there was 12 of them. So uh, it's a, it was a great place to feed for us, and we're really anxious to see that this continues and helps us out. Well, thank you so much, Peter. I understand that you're going across Canada this summer, and uh, good luck in Atlanta. Let's take you back to Gord Miller. Thanks very much, Teresa, getting set for the start of the second half. Interesting to note, Kathy, Justine Ellison back into the game for Toronto. We had her at three fouls. However, the official scorer says that she has just two. Apparently, one collision was not a foul. Ellison sat a long stretch late in the second half. Would you agree with that decision by Michelle Boulanger? Yes, I, I, I think that's good coaching strategy on Michelle's part. Um, she's, she's now got Tina back fresh. Um, they still got a close score. And uh, Tina can play with uh, a worrying about fouls. And Ellison quickly goes up for the ball with Stacey Yule in Toronto able to control. This is Liz Hart. Ellison puts it up and it goes. And Justine Ellison very quickly... Strikes for her 18th point of the game. She leads all scorers. Uh, uh, Justine came in quick and uh, hit that shot against Manitoba's zone. Marjorie Kelly with the miss. And now Toronto opening the second half much like it did the first. Remember, Toronto began the game with a 10-0 run. Well, that's got to uh, make uh, Michelle feel good that uh, Justine is back in the lineup and, and able to score so quickly. Laurel Johnson with the bounce pass. That time, Ellison with the miss, and now Manitoba quickly up the floor. T.L. Johannesson working underneath, and she gets it to go. T.L. Johannesson with her 18th point of the game. Manitoba's uh, had a bit of a containing press there. This is slow Toronto down. Top of the key, and that time, Laurel Johnson, just as easy as you please, throws that in. I think she's having a great game. Laurel Johnson now with 10. Here's Marjorie Kelly. Donald's back in the zone. They try to whip it inside for Vicki Newfeld. Marjorie Kelly comes up with it, but Laurel Johnson comes away with the final bounce. Oh, that's a great block shot by Laurel. Here's Liz Hart. Into the corner, and the shot by Kate Brancart falls short. Stacy Ewell puts it up, and it won't go. Stacy Ewell still does not have a point in the game. And Ewell trying to kick it underneath. It's off a Toronto player. Manitoba will maintain possession. Stacy's a very unheralded player on Manitoba, but boy, you know, a very valuable leader for them. Fifth-year player, does a little thing. Talk about senior leadership, but I know that's one thing that all university coaches talk about is leadership from the seniors. And Smith puts her head down and bumps in there to Justine Ellison. Smith lost the handle, but it's off a Toronto player. Manitoba will get it back, and Ellison might have been fortunate not to draw the third foul. Johannesson now was Manitoba resets the offense. Stacey Yule. Kelly. Charles, Charles picked up man to man now. Here's Ann Smith. Smith wheels, fires, it won't go, but Vicki Newfeld tried to save it. Toronto, however, comes away with it. Manitoba's got to be a little more patient, I think. He's trying to get it too quick. Toronto with a one point lead. Laurel Johnson, though, took an extra step. And Michelle Belanger quickly up and working the official. Both these coaches are experts, along with yourself, at getting the most from the official. <laughs> yes, uh, both uh, both these coaches are know how to work the officials. Uh, Want to make sure the officials are staying awake. And Smith took a bump. The ball almost rested on the backboard and wouldn't fall. And now we've got play stopped. It'll be 
Toronto basketball and a foul. Sometimes coaches come out of these games, I think, feeling just as exhausted as the players. Vicki Newfell with the foul. That is her first. And the team's first of this second half. Manitoba's own again. Von Spachinski now over across the top to Laurel Johnson. Her pass is picked off, and Marjorie Kelly quickly brings it back for Manitoba. T.L. Johannesson with the shot, won't go. Rebound, and Ewell comes up with it off the glass, and the first points of the game for Stacey Ewell give Manitoba the lead back. A great offensive rebound. Um, a game oh, ball. now a steal by T.L. Johannesson, and Manitoba enjoying a three-point lead. And now the up-tempo Manitoba game, you can see them trying to trap underneath there as they tried to block Yvonne Spachinski in. And a foul is called on T.L. Johannesson. Well, Manitoba's gotten most of their scores off turnovers, off open court running. The uh, foul is, pardon me, Kathy, the foul is Johannesson's second. Checking out of the game for Toronto at number 14. Laurel Johnson coming in as number six. Stephanie Splitter, the first year phys ed student. Two freshmen now playing in this national championship game. Shot by Liz Hart, won't go. Back comes Manitoba. The Bison sprinting down the floor. Here's Kelly. Marjorie Kelly pulls up and makes count it and the foul. Well, Marjorie Kelly's starting to get on track a little bit now, offensively. And that's a, a big key for the Bison in the second half. Yvonne Spachinski with the foul. That is her third of the game. Now Marjorie Kelly with a chance to add to Manitoba's biggest lead of the game. And she does. Foul shooting is a problem for the Bison in the first half. But Kelly able to complete the three-point play. Now bringing it up the floor was Yvonne Spachinski, but she's fouled going back the other way. And it's Stacy Ewell who got her, and Ewell is grabbing her right ankle. That's her second foul, and the last thing Colleen Dupree needs to see is her only starting senior down on the floor. Yeah, that would be a, a, a terrible loss. I hope uh, Stacey's able to continue to play because she's really providing stability on the team. And watch her right ankle right there as it rolls over. She actually stepped on the back of Spachinski's foot, and she remains down on the floor. I think one of the things Manitoba, you know, as long as they can get easy scores, they can get into their press, they just got to try and stay out of foul trouble. She's a little bit better from the line now. Stacey Eel goes to the bench for medical attention, and it would appear that Glenda Clark will check into the game for the Bison. Clark, number five, is a second year phys ed student from Brandon. In fact, nine of the 11 players on the Manitoba roster are natives of the province of Manitoba. And it is Glenda Clark who comes in. Linda Clark played a strong game last night in the semifinals uh, against Western Ontario. She came off the bench and gave them a scoring and rebound. Justine Ellison strikes for Toronto. She now has 20. And in three games in this tournament, actually just over two games, she has 70 points. Marjorie Kelly off the rim. It won't go. A massive fight for the rebound underneath. Jump ball. The possession arrow points in favor of the Manitoba Bison. Time out of the floor, 15-34 to play in the second half. Manitoba leads by four. Got an interest in this game? You know, juggling a family and a career is really tough, and that's what Colleen Dufresne, the coach of the University of Manitoba, has been doing. But she's lucky enough to have her dad, Lionel, and her son, looking after son Nicholas today. Lionel, you're telling me this is a well-traveled baby. It sure is. This is his fourth trip to Montreal from Winnipeg. One trip to Edmonton. He's getting to know all the players there now quite well. Yeah, he's got a yeah. career coming up in broadcasting here, he's too. a little boy. Yeah. yeah. Well, last night after their semifinal win, Colleen dedicated the win to her mom, who passed away in October. I would imagine her mom, Teresa McDonald Dufresne, would be very proud of Colleen right now, Lionel. Very, very proud of her. And I uh, wish she could be here. Yeah, doing it in the memory of her mom. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hi <laughs> to all my friends. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. 
Marjorie Kelly with the basket for the Manitoba Bisons. A nice story about the Bisons, about the dedication. And, you know, that's tough for Colleen Dufresne to have a, a young baby. She gave birth, what, seven months ago. Uh, it's full-time enough for uh, coaching a basketball team, try raising a child at the same time. Yeah, what a great uh, situation. Uh, she's got a supportive husband who, uh, and obviously a very supportive father. And her team now up by six. And Justine Ellison called for the walk, and Ellison doesn't like that call. Her team down by six with 15-17 to play. Stacey Ewell remains on the Manitoba bench as Glenda Clark helps direct the offense, but T.L. Johannesson does all the offense by herself there. She goes coast to coast, and now the Manitoba lead is eight. Johannesson has 22 and now leads all scorers. Well, Manitoba's pressure is really bothering Toronto. Here's Ellison wide open, and Justine Ellison makes it. And will the basket count? Yes, it will. That's a nice answer to Manitoba's pressure. If they can, if they can get the ball down, get easy scores like that, uh, it's going to make Manitoba uh, have a lot tougher time being able to put much pressure on. Foul is on Ann Smith, and that's the problem. That is her fourth. And Smith will now check out of the game. Is coming in is Kyla Koski. Koski saw some action in the first half, so Smith sits down with four fouls. Yeah, that could be a problem. Uh, there's a lot of time left in this game. Vicky Newfell comes away with that rebound. Here comes Glenda Clark with it. Ahead for T.L. Johannesson. Clark for Johannesson. Newfell. Marshy goes to Koski. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Johannesson puts it up and short. Rebound Newfeld. Three. Toronto varsity moves underneath. But Newfeld is able to make it go. What a great offensive board. Manitoba lead is eight. And the Bisons continue to apply the pressure no matter who's on the floor. Ellison. Working one-on-one -on -one against Newfield. Great move by Justine Ellison. What an athletic move. Change direction in the air. Put it in. Toronto's back with a little half-court pressure themselves. Trying to uh, cause some turnovers. From the corner. And the shot falls for Glenda Clark. And now the Manitoba lead again is eight. And the Bison show no signs of giving up. T.L. Johannesson with the steal. The Bison's quickly up the floor. And now Johannesson will set the offense. You hate to compare a Manitoba Bison to a player from the University of Winnipeg, but T.L. Johannesson reminds me a lot of Sandra Carroll. Well, uh, they do have some similarities. Uh, T.L. likes to penetrate a little bit more. Sandra has such a great outside Just shot. Just love to shoot the ball from outside, but the way they bring the ball up the floor, the coolness under fire. Very much so. Both terrific competitors, great athletes. Okay, Brancart with the miss, and the catch goes to Marjorie Kelly. Manitoba with a chance to take a 10-point lead. Johannesson calmly sets the offense. Under 13 minutes to play in the second half. Johannesson puts it up and offline. And they're battling for the rebound underneath. Kyla Koski was fighting for it there. I think one of the things Manitoba has to uh, watch is that they don't take a lot of early shots. They've got the great lead. They've got the momentum. They've got to be patient. They've got to be poised. Kyla Koski with a foul. That is her first of the game. It is the fifth, the fourth rather, team foul to Manitoba. Bison's lead by eight. The lead is really seesawed back and forth in this game. What a great game. It's just uh, two great teams. Liz Hart with the off-balance leaner. And Toronto now with it six. Liz did it last night. She brought uh, UFC back when they were down. See if she can do it again. Marjorie Kelly. That won't go as it walks across the rim. And Ellison fights her way to get the rebound. Stacey Ewell has gone to the Manitoba dressing room for more medical attention. Ellison lost it, but it's saved by Liz Hart, and now the bump. Glenda Clark puts down Yvonne Spachinski. That is Clark's first foul. Still lots of time left in the game. Toronto's just got to keep their poise as well, not panic. Just try and chip away at the lead. Underneath. 
deep. Liz Hart off the glass, no good. Patinsky with the rebound, no shot. And Toronto will inbound on the Manitoba foul. 11.57 to play here in the second half. It's a six-point lead. Time out on the floor. We'll return to the CIAU Women's Basketball Championship from Laval in a moment. Belanger of Toronto diagramming the attack for her team. A little bit difficult to see, but I, I think Michelle's trying to uh, work on attacking the full court pressure. Uh, they're getting trapped very early by Manitoba, and they're getting the ball very deep. And uh, that's a concern. It's very difficult for them to get the ball out. One thing most coaches say is that attacking full court pressure is a little bit of system, but a lot of patience and confidence. Very much so. When you don't um, have confidence, full court pressure can really affect you. Yeah, and, and full court, as I said before, full court pressure takes its toll because it starts wearing you down. Last foul is on T.L. Johannesson of Manitoba. That is her third. Liz Hart for Ellison, and Ellison trying to get around T.L. Johannesson, and that is her fourth. Now that is a key, costly foul. T.L. picked up a real quick fourth foul there on T.L. Johannesson picks up two quick fouls, and now she may have to go to the Manitoba bench. Remember, Stacy Ewell, the other starting point guard, is out of this game with an injury. Yeah, um, it'd be, it's going to be uh, going to test uh, TL's experience and, and uh, you know her her ability to stay in the game now and play. Justine Ellison at the line made the first, gets them both. Now Stacy Ewell is back at the Manitoba bench after going to the dressing room, so. If Johannesson has to check out, no doubt Colleen Dufresne would like to get Ewell back in the game. Here's Marjorie Kelly, double team. Johannesson has that walk across the rim. Fighting for the rebound underneath, Kyla Koski. And Koski is charged with the foul. Yeah, I'm not sure whether that foul was on the rebound or when she went tried to go back up. The... Um, uh, it was a great offensive rebound. Here she goes here. That little shove right there, and that's Koski's second foul. Now they say the Toronto player held her ground. D.L. Johannesson sits down for Manitoba. Fighting her way inside is Liz Hart. And it looks as though she might have been fouled by Ann Smith. Ann Smith just checked back into the game. And that's five fouls on Ann Smith. So much for that theory. And Smith comes right into the game, fouls out. Now Colleen Dufresne really has a problem. Here's her situation. Her starting point guard, Stacy Ewell, has turned her ankle. She's been trying to walk on it in behind the bench. Her all-Canadian, T.L. Johannesson, the other guard, is carrying four fouls. And Smith, who just came in to play guard, has fouled out. Yes, this is a real problem now for Manitoba. Uh, they got a four-point lead, but it's not enough. And they've got some very serious foul trouble. Now the question, can Stacy Ewell come back into the game? Ewell is in the huddle. She wears number four. Yeah, if Stacey can play, that'll, that'll certainly help solve the most immediate problem. That's the problem. But on a bad ankle, surely she can't play the up-tempo kind of game that Manitoba has been successful with. And yes, Stacy Ewell checks back into the game for the Manitoba Bison, but she's limping noticeably on her right ankle. And Liz Hart goes to the line for Toronto, trying to cut the lead to two. Well, the national championship team, Stacey will give it everything she's got. There must be a lid on that rim, because foul shooting down at that end has been the problem. Liz Hart makes the second. Toronto trails by a three, and here comes Stacey Ewell. And you can see but she is limping noticeably. Kyla Koski is the other guard, so T.L. Johannesson sits down. And a big clutch shot made there by Glenda Clark. Now you see if the bench will come through. A player like uh, uh, Glenda Clark, uh, she did it last night in the semis. She helped them off the bench. But the University of Toronto boasts the player of the year in Justine Ellison, and she may go to town. Ellison with the steal, but Manitoba able to quickly get it back. Stacey Yule. Marjorie Kelly is open. Kelly offline. Rebound to Laurel Johnson, who quickly brings it up the floor. Now Toronto is running the floor. 
Johnson trying to work inside, and they call the charge on Laurel Johnson. That's her first foul. Well, Laurel, you know, is trying to play guard there. She's Toronto center, and she brought the ball up the floor, and, and all she had to do was stop and, and give it off to a playmaker, and she tried to take it apart to the basket and stop the charge. Ten and a half minutes to play here in the second half. Here's Glenda Clark, number five with it. She's been pressed into service with T.L. Johannesson on the bench. Vicki Newfell with a shot that is short. Justine Ellison fights for the ball. They call a jump, and Manitoba has the possession arrow. It'll be Manitoba ball with the Bison enjoying a three-point lead. Again, I think Manitoba is being a little bit impatient. Um, both times down, one pass into a shot. Stacey Ewell, number four, will try it again for Manitoba. Down in the corner for Marjorie Kelly, off the dribble, double team, it won't go. But the rebound does go to Kyla Koski. And Kyla Koski quietly getting it done. She gets her first point, but she's been rebounding like a demon. Oh, it gets great, great scoring and rebounding from both Glenda Clark and Koski. Liz Hart, three-point try falls short. And on the tip, it is Manitoba ball. <laughs> Toronto's back in man to man. You will in the corner for Marjorie Kelly, one on one. But Kelly walks, and it'll be Toronto ball. Liz Hart with it now. Five point Manitoba lead. Manitoba's in, in the half court zone. Liz Hart on the drive and it will not go. And quickly, Manitoba three on one. Stacey Ewell bounce pass underneath. Glenda Clark with the shot, but she was fouled by Liz Hart. That is her second. Now coming back into the game for Toronto is Kate Brancart, number 11. She'll take the place of Laurel Johnson, number 14. I think Toronto's got to get back to what got, got them um, the early lead. They've got to start getting the ball back to Tina Ellison inside and trying to uh, get some easy scores and get to the foul line. Glenda Clark, a 73% free throw shooter. One thing to keep in mind here, and it's interesting, of all the starters for Manitoba, their worst free throw shooter is Stacy Yule, number four, and she handles the ball the most. That could that could be a problem uh, down the stretch if they have the lead. Yule, a 53% free throw shooter over the course of the season, and she's on a wobbly ankle as it is. Yule in the corner, almost daring her to shoot. Kyla Koski. Works across, the shot falls short, and quickly the rebound there goes to Rachel Deabois, who checks back into the game for Toronto. Yvonne Spachinski. Up top for Branchard, it won't go, and Kyla Koski with another big rebound for Manitoba. Yeah, she's doing just a terrific job. Uh, getting, getting the rebounds, uh, getting these little scores inside. Great pass underneath there to Vicki Newfeld, but Newfeld was fouled as she went up. Justine Ellison with the foul. Check that, it's Elizabeth Hart with the foul. That is her third. Well, Toronto still allowing Manitoba to penetrate. And they, uh, even with uh, TL off the floor. Vicki Newfeld from Winkler, Manitoba. Makes it just like that. She was all tournament at the CIU championship last year. She's had a great career at University of Manitoba. She makes them both, and the lead is seven. Hit your foul shot in the second half. Well, Colleen Dufresne told Teresa Hercus at the half that if they could make their foul shot, she thought that would take care of itself. Now a steal by Marjorie Kelly. She pulls up, leaves it short. Stacey Ewell backs up. 
And as Yule goes to take the shot, she is fouled. She'll go to the line. And we'll get an early look at how Stacey Yule's foul shot is. Foul shooting is going. Toronto uh, has to control the boards, and Manitoba's gotten way too many second shots. Kate Brancart with the foul for Toronto. The Varsity Blues are trailing by seven as Manitoba pours it on in the second half. Ford Miller with Teresa Hergert and Kathy Shields, the head coach of the Victoria Vikes and the former head coach of our national women's team for the CIAU Women's Basketball Championship for 1996. Colleen Dufresne's Manitoba Bison enjoying a seven-point lead and trying to keep the CIAU women's title in the province of Manitoba. The University of Winnipeg has won it the three previous years. And what a credit it is, and we wanted to talk about this, the high school programs in Manitoba, the University of Manitoba and the University of Winnipeg have outstanding basketball and volleyball programs, and by and large, the players are homegrown. As we mentioned, nine of the 11 players for the Bisons are from the province of Manitoba. Well, tremendous credit to the high school programs, the high school coaches in that province. They've done a great job and um, been able to feed the university. Stacey Ewell, as we mentioned, shot 53% from the free throw line over the course of the regular season, but makes the first. Makes them both, in fact, and the lead is nine. Another zone press, half court press to the trap at half court. Rachel Damois up top for Spachinski, and it rolls in and out. And Vicki Newfeld quickly with the rebound to Stacey Ewell. Goal for Newfeld, working one-on-one -on -one with Ellison. The bounce pass goes underneath and bounces to Marjorie Kelly. She can't get it to fall. And finally, Smachinski comes away with the rebound. Justine Ellison has been closely watched in the second half. Yeah, they, they've, they've sat in the zone. Manitoba's been playing the zone and been able to uh, keep the ball away from Tina's hand. Liz Hart with the miss. Marjorie Kelly on the run, and she is blocked there by Kate Brancart. And Brancart draws the foul. Now, talking a little bit more about the Winnipeg um, Manitoba High School uh, players, one of the neat things is they stayed at home. They haven't gone to the state. Uh, they stayed at home and uh, developed uh, university programs there. Well, Marjorie Kelly had an unopposed pass of the basket until Kate Brancart came over and took care of that. And perhaps a good foul there, and Kelly misses the front end. Marjorie Kelly, a second-year art student, who had 43 points in the final two playoff games against the Winnipeg Westman. Winnipeg won the first game of the best of three, but Manitoba came back to take the last two. Yeah, and I think uh, that shows, um, you know, they, w they won home court advantage when they played their last two games in the University of Manitoba. Justine Ellison was trying to get through underneath, but there was nothing there. Ellison is fouled. Before the game, Michelle Belanger was mentioning that uh, they are concerned about how to contain Marjorie Kelly, and I really think she's turned it on in the second half. Vicki Newfell with the Manitoba foul. It is her second. Remember that Manitoba has built up this lead largely with its best player on the bench, All-Canadian T.L. Johannesson with foul trouble has been sitting down for the last four minutes or so. Well, pretty nice for uh, Colleen Dufresne to be able to uh, not only rest uh, T.L., but uh, you know, get some minutes off the clock and get her back in it um, you know, with maybe four minutes, four and a half minutes left in the game. 6.59 to go in the second half, and the Manitoba Bisons with an eight-point lead over the Toronto Varsity Blues. And if the Blues do come back, it may be due in some small part to their fan support. Teresa Hergert is surrounded by painted men. Yes, Teresa surrounded by painted men. What's it all about, Pete? Oh, Gord, you like to start the rumors, but yes, it is true. So, you know, unfortunately, right now for these guys, Manitoba's got the lead, but they're doing their best to cheer their team on. What are you guys doing to provide inspiration here today? Go Blues go, basically. That's all. That's it. That's all you can do. That's kind of the team right there. Well, I understand that you're on the national volleyball team. Your nope. name, sir? No, nope, I'm not. You're wrong. You said you were at the national, though. Oh, I was at the uh, volleyball yeah. national CIUs for uh, university. Uh -huh. And uh, that was last weekend uh -huh. in Calgary and uh, for U of T. And we just came back now, came, drove right out here. 
Okay, right. I understand you're saying the shops at Frontenac, not too bad. We are. <laughs> Hot tubs and uh, swimming pools and everything like that. I've just got one other question. I'm really worried. Do you think this stuff's going to come off? <laughs> it's worth it. You know, the Blues, both basketball and volleyball, both men's and women's came through. We're just here to support them. And, hey, it comes off, comes off, doesn't it, doesn't. No big deal. Well, grab the call. <laughs> Let's take you back to Gordon Miller. All I can say is, Teresa, I'm not spending any time on the hot tub with those guys tonight. Glenda Clark brings it up the floor for Manitoba. The Bisons lead it by eight. Yeah, Toronto's trying to up the pressure, trying to get some turnovers, get the ball back. Stacey Ewell trying to fire it underneath. We've got a foul in behind there. It looks like... Laurel Johnson will be called. That'll be her second. You know, Toronto's in man-to-man. -man. They have to really work hard man-to-man, -man, try and um, come back from this deficit. And Manitoba inbounded. Six and a half minutes to play here in the second half. And Manitoba able to weather the storm while T.L. Johannesson was out of the game. And she remains on the bench. Kyla Koski can't get the shot to fall, and here come the Varsity Blues. Liz Hart. Strong's got lots of time. They really have to make sure, again, that they just take their time, every possession, see if they can get it, find a way to get it inside the cleanup. And that's what doing a very good job on it. No openings there. Kate Brancart drives and finally gets it to go just as... The shot clock was about to expire. The lead is down to six. And getting set to come back into the game is T.L. Johannesson for Manitoba. So the Bison's able to weather the storm. Buell for Kyla Koski. When the Clark is open and it won't go. And the Varsity Blues rebound and will quickly bring it up the floor. Liz Hart. Patinsky underneath for Elliott. Who's got, Elliott has got three players on her. Liz Hart trying for three. It won't go. They battle underneath. Marjorie Kelly away with it. And here's Stacy Ewell on the break. And Ewell makes the easy layup. Manitoba up by eight. That's a great rebound again by Marjorie Kelly. Great athlete. Toronto tried to cut the lead to three with the three-point shot. Instead, finds itself down eight. And every trip now is a war. Brancart can't get the fall. Justine Ellison does get the rebound for a moment. And finally, Liz Hart gets the rebound. Charles got to be able to hit some outside shots. They're really relying on Kina. They're giving her a very difficult time. And Ellison outside. couldn't make there. The L. Johannesson continues to wait for a stoppage in play. Marjorie Kelly puts, pulls up. It won't go. And here's Ellison with it. <laughs> motion against the Manitoba zone. From the corner, Brand, or Liz Hart rather hits for three. Big shot for the Varsity Blues, who now trail by five. Finally, as you mentioned, Toronto able to heat up the shot. Well, if they can hit one or two of those, it's going to open the inside up again. People are going to have to, Manitoba's going to have to come out and defend those shooters. Newfeld, great spin move underneath the basket, won't go. Ellison fighting her off for the rebound. It is Toronto ball, 3.49 to play in the second half. Manitoba leads by five. Better known as D.L. Johannesson. She got 22 points today that accounts for better than a third of the Manitoba Bison's offense, and she's set to come back in carrying four fouls. Yeah, and I think Terry, you know, Terry Lee is just an incredible competitor. I think, uh, you know, every time there's a tough situation, every time I've seen her in the last two years, she finds a way. She's got great heart. So she goes back into the game with Stacy Yule. And think back to five minutes ago, both those players were out of the game. Yule with a bad ankle. 
And Johansson carrying four fouls. So they're back in. 3.49 to play in the second half. The possession arrow favors Toronto. And the Varsity Blues trail the game by five. Underneath is Ellison, and maybe you're right. The open shot opens up the play underneath because Justine Ellison gets her easiest basket in quite a while. Yeah, they came out on Laurel uh, Johnson there and uh, left Tina wide open for a nice layup. Johansson ooh, makes her first. After five minutes on the bench, she comes off and makes her first, and quickly, full court pressure, and they've got Pachinski hemmed in the corner, but now Toronto able to break away. Deamois underneath Ellison, and she is fouled as she goes up. That's the one, one problem that Manitoba, we've just seen, uh, when they pressure high, if they don't get back hard, uh, it leaves it open for a great player like Tina in the open court. Dylakoski with the foul, her third. Justine Ellison goes to the line. Ellison now has 30 points on the afternoon. So, you know, you've got your both, both all Canadians just having outstanding games. She makes this, she'll have accounted for better than half of her team's scoring. She does, and she has. <laughs> Now the lead is three, and we're in for a finish. All the starters are back into the game now. With the exception of Ann Smith of Manitoba, who was fouled out. Well, the bench players off Manitoba have done a great job. Great drive by Terry Lee Johannesson. And she ups the lead back to five. Liz Hart, cornered down there, able to get it away. Rachel Damois. Damois into the corner. Laurel Johnson thought about it, now moves underneath. And she is fouled as she works under there. That last score by TL, that was a great call by, um, probably by the coach uh, for an isolation. Vicki Newfeld with a foul, that is her third. And to the line goes Laurel Johnson. On the year, a 60% free throw shoot. Well, those are those are huge right now. Absolutely huge. Makes them both. Gets the world. Watch free throw shooting brings Toronto back within three with under two and a half minutes to play in the second half. They're almost daring Ewell to shoot. She throws it underneath for Vicki Newfeld. Touched by a Manitoba player on the way out. Toronto ball. Toronto is trying to deny TL uh, Johannesson the ball there and uh, allowing uh, Stacey to have the ball. Stacey Ewell. Ellison, triple teamed off the glass wow. and good. What a great play. That's why she's the player of the year. Justine Ellison brings her team within one with 2.01 to play in the second half, and timeout call. Well, for a time, it looked like this game might get away from Michelle Belanger's team. They've battled back, now within one. Manitoba was able to withstand the problems of injuries and foul trouble. Take us inside both of them. Michelle Belanger first. probably inside. Work your triangle. When they say play Ewell honest, what do they mean by that? What they're saying is don't sag off Ewell. Play her straight up. And uh, 
uh, you know, player shot, player drive. Because that last possession, they were virtually daring her to, to shoot. Here's Kelly with it. Off the screen, Kelly won't go. And Ewell comes up with a catch. New 30 now for Manitoba. Another second shot for Manitoba. Another second shot opportunity. And Johannesson is content to work time off the shot clock. Now from the corner, off the iron, no good. Liz Hart quickly working up with Ellison. And now Hart will pull up and Toronto will set the offense. Laurel Johnson. They're trying to get it underneath to Justine Ellison, who is triple team. Hart, now for Ellison, quadruple team. They collapse to her. Hart with a three-point try, no good. Manitoba with the rebound and jump ball. It'll be Toronto basketball. Yeah, I think... arrow points to Toronto. Sorry, Kat. It's okay, Liz. I mean, if that shot had fallen for Liz, that would have been huge. Uh, they, you know, everybody's just absolutely collapsing on Tina, and they have to hit those outside shots. Varsity Blues try for their first lead since they led 39-38. Now they work around. Laurel Johnson thought about shooting for a moment. Allison is being mugged underneath. In the corner, Liz Hart steps, shoots, and makes it. And Toronto back on top under a minute to play, and they're running and gunning here at Laval. Off the glass, no good. Newfeld trying for the rebound. Can't get it. Loose ball. They still battle for it. And jump ball. That'll be Manitoba ball. 33.7 seconds left. Well, they ran a one-on-one -on -one isolate for TL, but uh, she couldn't get it to drop that time. Timeout called by Manitoba's Colleen Dufresne. And let's go listen in on her huddle if we can. Assistant coach Mike Hickey, who actually directed this team for a time this early this year when Colleen was on maternity leave. Very experienced coach. Uh, been in the CIU for many years. Um, very good coach. Let's go for the Colleen Dufresne. Michelle Belanger, do not foul. Yeah, uh, Colleen setting up a 1-4 offense high, uh, allowing um, a, a penetration situation with the screen for TL. And you saw diagram, do you see right where TL Johannesson is standing? And she has the basketball, sets the screen, puts it up, won't go. Vicky Newfeld, the rebound, that's blocked. They fight away underneath, and look at the scramble for the ball. Jump ball. And it's Manitoba's ball if that's a jump ball. And it should be Toronto ball. It is. They hadn't changed the possession arrow, so it is Toronto basketball. 20 seconds left. And now the foul goes against Marjorie Kelly as she knocks her off as the number Liz Hart down. Confusion reigned here for a moment as Toronto celebrated. But Manitoba took a look at the... Uh, position arrow and thought he would get the ball. Well, that's one of those things with the, you know, the rules now where we have no jump balls. Once the first jump ball uh, takes place at the start of the game, you just go by the luck of the draw. Talk about clutch free throw shooting now. Liz Hart, 79%, the best among all the varsity blue players. Oof. Well, this is, sorry, sorry about this that. Is, <laughs> this is tight times right now. Well, Manitoba's got lots of time to bring it down the floor here. At best, the lead could be two. She misses them both. Ellison, the rebound, misses. They fight again underneath. And Marjorie Kelly trying to come away with it. Newfeld does. It's tipped by a Toronto player on the way out. And the foul will go against Rachel Damois. Oh, both teams just so desperate. 
That's a huge foul because it sends Manitoba to the line for the chance to take the lead. Oh, both teams on the floor. What a huge foul that is. It sends Vicky Newfeld to the line to shoot two. Newfeld 68% to the line, and we've got another timeout call. 11.5 seconds to go. Not only did Manitoba come away with the ball, but the Bisons were able to draw the foul. And now, with Newfeld at the line, if she can make the both, the Bisons will leave. Yes, this is, uh, this will be, we'll really see now with the Bisons still down at the foul line. This is huge, uh, obviously very important foul. You can be the deeper. Hey, be the deeper. No foul. Make them go that way, don't get the ball. Make them go that way. Newfeld will go to the line here, but her team has not shot well from the line. Two of 12 in the first half, but overall, her team is just 33%, 7 of 21. She makes these both the team lead. Toronto quickly with a chance to win the CIAU Women's Basketball Championship. Here's Liz Hart. Time winding down. They got to hurry. Ellison, quadruple team goes up. No basket. No basket. Tie game. We're going to overtime. Wow. Woo. Well, I'll tell you. Every single eye in the place was on Reg Caulfield as he walked to the scorer's table and then waved it off. We will have a five-minute overtime period yeah, to decide I... this game. Let's listen to when the horn sounds. It was close, but a great call. Close, but it was a great call. It was definitely the horn had gone off. was that close to giving her team a national championship. She had a really heads-up play. She was surrounded, but then she looked around and she had an opening for the basket. A little bit too late. Well, Vicki Newfeld right now is the player of the moment. She made the one to tie it. And but she and Ellison are both pulling over what they think might have been. Vicky's got to put that behind her. I can see, you know, you can see she's visibly upset. She's got five more minutes of important basketball to play. Now, foul carry over here. Remember, T.L. Johannesson is carrying four for the Manitoba Bison. Justine Ellison has just two. Yeah, this is an important... Uh, uh, time, a very important situation now for the Bison. Will the fouls uh, take their toll in the overtime? Or can, you know, uh, T.L., as you see, is carrying four fouls. She's got to play another five minutes. Don't forget, later tonight, we've got the CIAU Men's Hockey Championship from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto as March. The month of champions continues here on TSN and rolls on next week with the CIAU Men's Basketball Championship from Halifax. This is, this is the month for basketball fans. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I think that was the Toronto huddle where we heard them say, 
trying to draw the foul, perhaps pointing out the fact that T.L. Johannesson is carrying four. Yeah, that's, uh, Toronto, Toronto knows uh, Manitoba's in some serious foul trouble. They're going to try and go inside. So we'll play five minute overtime half, so we have a winner. And the possession arrow points toward Manitoba. Ellison and Newfeld for the test. And it's Toronto ball to start this overtime period. Still in their key three zone, Manitoba. Liz Hart down to the corner for Laurel Johnson. Ellison off the glass, and it goes. What a great move. Justine Ellison has been absolutely astounding. She now has 34. And T.L. Johannesson hasn't been half bad either for the Manitoba Visor. He's got 26. Marjorie Kelly in and out. And a quick catch for the Varsity Blues. Nerve-wracking time for players from both teams. Oh, and they're tired. They played three games, you know, already. Allison underneath makes great players in big games. Exactly, that's the what you always hope. Coaches always hope your big players come to play in the big ones. We talked about Johannesson and Allison off the top of the show, and they've dominated. Newfeld puts it up. It won't go. Toronto was hoping it was a travel. Instead, it's a foul. Laurel Johnson, that is her third. Well, last few times down, uh, Toronto's been able to get the ball back inside, uh, like early in the game. And Manitoba's got to really tighten that up. Vicki Newfeld <laughs> having a tough time with the free throw. And that's been a problem for her team. Newfeld makes the second. Toronto's lead is three. Liz Hart brings it up the floor quickly. To Rachel Dambois. Really, just barely got the ball over in time. Yeah, just in time. Barely. Laurel Johnson with it. Oh, great pass underneath for Ellison, but she travels. Yeah, I think, um, again, they, they can't just rely on getting the ball into uh, Ellison. I mean, that player was open for an outside shot there. Forced it inside. E.L. Johannesson brings it up the floor. And leaves it short. And Deamois comes away with the rebound. Colleen Dufresne shooters have gone cold now in this overtime. Toronto leads by three, 3.05 to play in the first overtime period. Toronto showing great great boys against the zone at the moment. They really moves the ball well. Damois wide open. It walks the rim. Liz Hart the rebound. It won't go. Ellison fights for the rebound. Jump ball, and it'll go to Manitoba. <laughs> Sorry, possession arrow. It'll go to Manitoba. Hey, it's been a while since I've done basketball. <laughs> I go to lots of games. <laughs> Well, I haven't called one in a while, and what a way to come no back. face off. That's right. Where's the puck? <laughs> T.L. Johannesson. <laughs> Just like that. Huge shot. I mean, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, back into it. One point difference. 72-71. Toronto leads the steal by Marjorie Kelly. And the layup. Manitoba back in front. And the full court pressure pays off for the Bisons that time. Von Spachinski, double team to get it to Ellison. Laurel Johnson trying to bounce it back in for Ellison off the leg of Vicki Newfeld. One of the problems Toronto's having against full court pressure is they're taking the ball at the sideline. And uh, that time they got trapped uh, in the backcourt and then again in the front court on the side. They'll try and keep the ball in the middle a little bit more. Rachel Damois inbounds. Yvonne Spachinski will look inside for Justine Ellison. 
Thompson Ellison. Double team has to kick it back out, and they save the over and back. Great play by Liz Hart. And now they reach in on Ellison, and we get a foul call against Manitoba. Vicki Newfeld, and that is her fourth. So Newfeld and Johannesson are both carrying four fouls with 1.49 to play in the first overtime period. Justine Ellison will go to the line. If she can make them both, her team will be back in the lead. Justine Ellison, 77% this year. Uh, Justine's a very good foul shooter, and uh, she's a cool customer. Just made her first one there, and uh, she's been making them all tournaments. Makes them both. And now it's 74-73 Toronto. And the lead seesaws back and forth. Vicky Newfeld, some tough work underneath. What a great, great pass by T.L. Johannesson to set up Vicky Newfeld. And the lead goes back to Manitoba. Long lead pass, Vicky Newfeld able to tip that one out of bounds. And Toronto will maintain possession. 23 seconds left in the shot clock. Laurel Johnson. Now they'll try and cross court. Liz Hart for three, yes! What a huge shot that is. And Toronto back on top. Now Vicki Newfeld comes right back the other way and a game that has seen the lead change hands 10 times is tied. 77-77 with under a minute to go. And you can see the exhaustion on the players' faces. Paczynski to Liz Hart. Back to Yvonne Paczynski. They're moving the ball really well against against the Manitoba zone. Found somebody open in the corner there. And working underneath, Dan Watt can't get the shot away. Game still tied, under 30 seconds to go now. Marjorie Kelly's open, off the glass. Oh, yes! It just goes, Toronto wants timeout. And the Varsity Blues get it. 24.1 seconds left in the first overtime period. It's a nail biter in Laval. Welcome back to Laval University, the CIA Women's Basketball Championship. 79-77 is the lead for the Manitoba Bison. The Toronto Varsity Blues will get the ball back. Possession arrow favors the Varsity Blues. Manitoba has one timeout left. Both teams are shooting on any foul. And we may be looking at a second overtime here. Liz Hart. Here's Ellison. Justine Ellison. Double team. Off the glass. Won't go. Rebound Manitoba. Under 10 seconds to go. The Varsity Blues need to foul. And they finally do. D.L. Johansson is fouled. By Yvonne Spatinsky. And now T.L. Johansson will go to the line. Well, they had a great shot opportunity there. And it just rolled out. Wow. Well, you get it in the hands of the player you want to get it to, right? That's exactly right. They had it in their all-Canadian's hands, and it just rimmed out. Now Colleen Dufresne talking defense, no doubt, with Kyla Koski and Vicki Neufeld, her two defensive specialists. But the focus is on T.L. Johansson, who makes the first and pumps her fist, knowing that that makes a national championship a lot closer. Well, she now, can ice it with this one. That's right. She misses, Toronto's got a chance to make a three. She makes four-point lead. 5.5 seconds to go. And Toronto must score quickly and then foul. The shot off the glass. And the Manitoba Bison in overtime win the CAU Women's Basketball Championship in a thriller over the Toronto Varsity Blues. Frank. 
Larry the Nicholas has a big reason to smile now. This team trailed by 10 in the first three minutes of the game. The lead changed hands 11 times. But in the end, the Manitoba Bisons come away with the win. And they are the national champions for the first time since 1988. We'll be back with our post-game presentations and the player of the game when we return to the University of Laval in just a moment. National Final, brought to you by Chevrolet. Tried, tested, and true. T.L. Johannesson with 29 points, including two clutch free throws at the end, is our Saxon player of the game. She's standing by with Teresa Herger. Thanks so much, T.L. I am wondering if you have anything left to talk to me right now. How does this feel to be the champion and also the player of the game? Um, player of the game aside, champions of the CIU. This has been a goal of ours since two years ago. Started with our... Uh, make to the final last year continued on throughout the season we had a couple ups and downs but we came through big time today it was a great team effort let's talk about 5.5 seconds left to go in this overtime period you're at the free, free, uh, free throw line what's going through your mind well don't miss for one thing uh no i just knew that you know it's the foul side it's on your head if i make these two foul shots that's it we got the crown yeah, you guys got off to a little bit of a slow start, but it says an awful lot about this team that you came back and you never lost your composure. That's just Bison basketball for you. I mean, we have our little slump. we got to have it. But we come out, we come out strong second half, and we hung on, and we won the game. Well, last year you lost to your crosstown rivals at Winnipeg Westman. You watched them celebrate. Today you're celebrating. How sweet does it feel? This is one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. And for the Bisons and our team, just, I can't even put it into words. It's amazing. Well, congratulations to you and your teammates. You are 1996 Women's Basketball Champions. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll let Thank you get you. back to the team. Well, a more thrilling final I have never seen in my life. Let's take you back to Gordon Miller. Thanks very much, Teresa. Think back to two years ago. They beat the Winnipeg Westman streak last year. They got to the final. Now they're the champions. For Kathy Shields and Teresa Hergert, I'm Gord Miller. Thanks for watching. Congratulations to the Manitoba Bison. And so long from the back. Underneath pocket. He's my trouble, that's what you do. Women's Basketball Championship turned out to be pretty mad in itself. The U of T versus Manitoba with a title on the line. CIAU, Player of the Year. Justine Ellison getting it done early on in the first half. She hits for three. Lady Blues by three. Manitoba answers with their offensive weapon. T.L. Johansson will take it coast to coast. Makes the layup. Manitoba by one. We go to the second half. Johansson continues to work. She makes the steal, lays it up for two. Manitoba by three, but Ellison kept the U of T in it. Great move. She'll take it to the bucket. U of T now trails by two. Dying seconds of the game. U of T with a chance to win it. Justine Ellison gets it to go, but time had expired. We're going to overtime. Late in overtime. Marjorie Kelly drives. She'll get a friendly roll. The Bison by two. From there, the game was decided from the foul line, and Manitoba won the battle. They win the national title with an 81-77 to victory. It's their first national title since 1987-88. Terry Lee Johansson scored 29 points for the Bisons. Here's Teresa Herger. Well, last year you lost to your crosstown rivals at Winnipeg Westman. You watched them celebrate. Today you're celebrating. How sweet does it feel? This is one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. And for the Bisons and our team, just, I can't even put it into words. It's amazing. And the top eight are looking for a CIAU title. The Bisons face the University of Toronto Varsity Blues. 
St. Foy, Quebec, and here we go. It's Manitoba and White in trouble early. Varsity Blues had an opening drive of 10 and 0. The Bisons in trouble, but they would score their first basket here. Terry Lee Johannesson nails the deuce. 10-2 Canada trails later. Nice passing by Manitoba. Marjorie Kelly to Stacey Yule. Johannesson would put it in off the glass. Second half. It's Terry Lee Johannesson going right down Main Street. This gave the Bisons an eight-point lead. She had 22 points at this point. 49-41 Bisons. Later, Glenda Clark helping out off the bench. She would hit the long-distance deuce. 55-50 Manitoba in front. This is where it becomes interesting. U of T would take the lead. Liz Hart cuts in and gets two late in the game now. Manitoba trailing by one. Victoria Neufeld, she would go one for two at the line. That would tie the game. We would go to the final in overtime. It's Manitoba Bison defeating the University of Toronto. A final 81 to 77. Terry Lee Johannesson was the most valuable player of the tournament. Victoria Neufeld, the tournament all-star. Great day for Manitoba. Good Athens. for them. That's fantastic. U of M's always been such an underdog to the U of W, too. It's first, nice to see them turn it around. And year. it was their first championship since 1988. So good Fantastic. For them. All right. Today, as the University of Manitoba Bisons met the Toronto Varsity Blues, the Bisons fell behind 10 nothing before Terry Lee Johannesson and the Bisons got the ball rolling. The Herd took the lead before halftime. Marjorie Kelly sinks this one for a 36-35 advantage at the break. This one would come right down to the wire. Vicki Neufeld made the last second free throw to tie it at 68, but she misses the potential game winner, giving Toronto one last shot. But after a mad dash down court, the ball goes in after the buzzer, and we go to overtime. Kelly clinches the game for the Bisons with this basket as another team from Manitoba goes on to a national championship. The final was 81-77 in overtime. These are just a few of the stories we're working on for Sports Sunday coming up at 11.30. Join us then for your complete sports wrap-up, including more on the Jets' loss tonight. The Bisons claim their second straight national men's volleyball title. Today, the women's basketball team were trying to little, earn a little respect for themselves as they took on Toronto in the CIAU final. Now keep in mind, the Lady Bisons have been living in the shadow of the Lady Westman for the past three years. So there was a little added incentive for the herd as they took to the court in Laval, Quebec. And like the Briar, this game would be a real barn burner. Brown will get off to a quick start, but the Bisons would chip away. Here Marjorie Kelly spots Vicki Neufeld in the paint. That would cut the Blues' lead to six. Bisons would take a one-point lead into the second, then they turn it up a bit. Nice touch here by Glenda Clark to make the score 53-45 for Manitoba. Toronto continues to press, but then watch this nice baseline jumper from T.L. Johannesson. Bisons now lead by five. Then the Blues will take the lead late into the half as Liz Hart makes a nice move to free herself up. She then drains the deuce. T.O. lead by one. Manitoba come back to tie, though, and we are off to overtime. And in the extra frame, watch the work by Vicky Neufeld underneath the rim. That makes the score 77 all. Then in the dying moment, T.L. Johannesson will put the game out of reach at the free throw line. The Bisons have another banner to hang on the gymnasium wall as the women's basketball team win in extra time. Team Vancouver Curry, Todd, they step out of the shadow of the U of W and into the spotlight at the CIU Women's Basketball Championship. The celebration is on deck. Tanner will reside in this province for a fourth straight year. After living in the shadow of the U of W for the last three seasons, the Lady Bisons made a statement of their own today, beating Toronto in a nail-biter in Quebec City. Colleen Dufresne's club, though, looked a little jittery in the early going. In fact, the Bisons got off to a very shaky start. They quickly fell behind 10-0 to the Varsity Blues, but they uh, would settle down thanks to uh, tournament MVP Terry Lee Johansson, who does a nice job uh, finishing off the fast break here to cut the deficit to a half dozen. And the Herd would take the lead before halftime. This uh, Marjorie Kelly bucket off the turnover gave them a 1.36-35 advantage at the break. And this game would come right down to the wire. Vicki Neufeld, a tournament all-star, made the last second free throw to tie it at 68. But she missed the potential game winner. And that gave Toronto one last shot in regulation. But after this uh, mad dash down court with the clock ticking, they ran out of time. Well, they do not beat the buzzer. A good but uh, gutsy call by the ref. And uh, no basket on to overtime. The seesaw frame was decided on this basket. Kelly gets the shooter's roll. A couple of free throws later, and the Bisons celebrate a much-deserved and long-awaited national title. Bisons win it by four. They had the bronze two years ago, a silver last. Now they finally capture the gold. 
And it was a big day all around at the U of M. The Bison men pulled off a three-peat at the CIAU Track and Field Championships in Windsor, the school's seventh title in nine years. lead Manitoba by three, but Manitoba answers with their own offensive weapon. T.L. Johannesson takes it coast to coast, makes the layup, Manitoba by one. Second half, Johannesson continues to go to work. She makes the steal, then lays it in for two. Manitoba by three, but Ellison kept the U of T in it. Great move, she'll take it to the bucket. U of T trails by two. Now we go to the dying seconds of the game. U of T with a chance to win it. Justine Ellison gets it to go, but time had just expired. We go to overtime and late in OT. Marjorie Kelly drives to get a friendly roll. Bison's by two. From there, the game was decided from the foul line and Manitoba won the battle. They win the national title with an 81 to 77 victory. This is Manitoba's first national title 